Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I bless God. I bless God because of many things. Because today is the 17th of December. Bwana asifiwe. Just a few more days to the end of 20 23. And you know many times people normally say that January has 700 days. And many times it has 700 days because of what we do in December. Bonus if you otherwise it would not have the 700 days. But this year if January normally has 700 days then I wonder how many days this year has had. But God has carried us through. Hallelujah. I also want to take this opportunity to thank God so, so much for our dad in the house and mom in absentia. Come on, let's celebrate him. Hey, better, buona sifiwe. Amen. He's been a source of encouragement in the year 2023 when things have been elephant. You see him smile, and because he is our father in the house, some of us, when he smiles, we hide there and we say, if it is well with him, it is well with, with us. So if he is continuing moving, we are continuing moving. Tunangoja tuone amesimama, akisimama tutasimama, but he has never stopped. And so we thank God. We want to bless God so, so much for each and every one of us. Because in spite of the challenges that have been there, we have still been coming to church. Bona sifiwe. Unajua kuna wakati mtu anakufa moyo mpaka anaamua hata hiyo kanisa sitafanya nini? Sitaenda. Niliomba huyo Mungu lakini nyumba ikafungwa. Kwa hivyo siendi. You know the way you throw tantrums. Like the babies you did not give me that thing in the supermarket. So I am not going to wake up from here and we sit on the floor. But these people that are seated here have never done that. Bona sifiwe. And so we are so grateful for each and every one of you who has kept on coming and believing, having hope against hope. And today we want to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 50. Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 50. We are just about to have Christmas. In how many days? To not find a countdown this time. It's how many days? Seven days. Tunaenda ku? Tunaenda, tunasemaga tunaenda kukula Christmas. Bwana sifiwe. Kukula Christmas. <laughs> and that word normally amuses me because I'm wondering, Christmas in aliwa kweli. And so today we want to look at Christ, the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Christ, the reason for the season. We are going to look at Luke chapter 2. Verse 41 to 50. Luke chapter 2. Uh -huh. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. Underline that. He lingered, but Joseph and the mother did not know that he lingered. When, uh -huh. But supposing him to have been in there, in the company, they went a day's journey. Underline that one also. They did what? Went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? 
but they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Amen. I'd like us to read Exodus chapter 33, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I'll give it, verse 2. And I'll send my angel before you, and I'll drive out the Canaanites and Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst. Underline that. For I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the story that we first read is a story about Jesus Christ. And Jesus at that point in the book of Luke chapter 2, he is at the age of 12. Age of 12. You're a teenage in Aingia, Sindio. The age of 12. And they have gone with the mother and the father for a, a feast, a religious feast, which is normally called the Passover. And don't worry, we are still getting into Christmas. But what I'm talking about was the Passover. So they have gone for that religious feast and after the celebrations were over, the parents left the venue and they started walking because in those days, there were no vehicles, there were no matatus, there were no Ubers, there were only donkeys and if there was a rich family, perchance they would afford a horse. But most of the times, there were only donkeys or people would walk. And so they are walking. And the Bible says that they walked um, until they had gone as far as a day's journey. A day's journey walking. And all this while, they are not aware that they have left their teenage son behind. They are not aware that they have left their teenage son behind behind. And so after a while, after the one day's journey, suddenly they start looking for Jesus all over. They are looking for him among the relatives. They are looking for him among the acquaintances and they are not able to find him because Jesus had been left in Jerusalem. They did not check to ensure that their son Jesus Christ was with them as they left. Mothers who are here know that at that age of 12 years, you do not leave your son behind because normally they are full of mischief. So they did not really look out for him. They um, imagined that he was together with them as they went, as they were headed home. And you know, that story, as you read it, it makes me feel like they must have been walking in a crowd. Because if there were only the three of them, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, they would have noticed that their son was not with them. But it looks like they were walking in a crowd. Just like many times we come to church in a crowd. You know, we go for Christmas in a crowd. We go for celebrations in a crowd. And we love when people are many. We love when people are many. And so after a day's journey, they discover that they are not together with Jesus Christ. And they start looking for Jesus Christ. They start looking for Jesus Christ. In other words, what we are saying, Jesus' parents lost him in the midst of a celebration. And it's very easy as we enter into this season of Christmas for us to celebrate the birthday of one whom we lost a few weeks ago. It's very easy for us to be excited as we will be roasting the nyamachoma and the kukuchomas and the like, yet... Jesus was left in the city as you 
got into your vehicle to travel home or wherever it is that you are going. And many times, maybe you may not lose him in relationship, but you can lose him in fellowship. Because Jesus' mother never lost Jesus in relationship. Jesus' father never lost Jesus in relationship. They were still his parents. Mary was still the mother of Jesus. Joseph was still the father of Jesus, but they lost him in fellowship. You can still be born again because of the sinner's prayer that we prayed or you prayed, but you have lost or I have lost fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I no longer enjoy being around him. I no longer enjoy reading the word of God. And it's not just because of this season, but I want us just to think of life in general. We could have lost him during this year because of the way things were thick. Things were very tough. And we could have lost him. We murmured, we grumbled until we lost him on the way. And at, at many, many times, we don't lose Jesus in bad places. Okay, there are a few people who lose Jesus in bad places. But like for Mary and Joseph, they did not lose Jesus in a pub somewhere. But they lost Jesus during a religious celebration. We can be doing all the right things. We could be serving in the worship team. Serving in hospitality. I could be serving as a, as a pastor. Yet, I am concentrating on the service too much until I have lost fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, the reason for the season. Maybe you're asking, how can a pastor, how can you lose fellowship with Jesus Christ? Even people who serve the Lord can lose him. And how can we lose him? We can lose him in that I only dive into the word of God when I know on Sunday 17th, I am coming to preach to you. I do not get into scriptures because I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to fellowship with the Lord. And at that point, I could have lost it. As we get into this season, oh, how I pray that we will seek to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, how I pray that that will be the main thing. That we will not assume Jesus is in our midst, yet he is not there. Because Mary and Joseph assumed that Jesus was with them, yet they had left him a day's journey. And they took other three days looking for him. Because Jesus was not the one who had left them, but it was them who had left Jesus Christ. Actually, when they started looking for him, scripture says that they found him right in the temple where they had left him. Right in the temple where they had left him. So it's not Jesus who loses us. Many times it's us who lose him. The second scripture that we have read in the book of Exodus talks of the children of Israelite. The Israelites have left Egypt and the Lord is in their company. They are walking and the Lord is using Moses to lead them. The Lord is directing Moses. From time to time, Moses would go to the mountain. And as he went to the mountain, God would give him instructions. God would tell him, go and tell these people this. God would give them the Ten Commandments. God was constantly there with them. But it got to a point, if you read, you can uh, uh, later on read chapter 32. When Moses was up the mountain seeking counsel from the Lord they were left at the foot of the mountain and what they decided to do they decided to create an image a golden image so that they can worship they lost the fellowship with the father as their leader was up the mountain 
And so God comes in, in chapter 33, verse 1 to 3, and he's telling Moses, he's telling the Israelites that you can now move on, but I will not be in your midst. I am going to allow the angel to go with you. He will go ahead with you. And the Lord is promising, even in verse 3, that I will still give you that land that is having milk and honey. I will still give you the material blessings that had, blessed, uh, that had promised your forefathers, but I will not go with you and I was reading that scripture and I was asking if this would be the case in the current dispensation that the Lord is saying Millicent I am going to give you an angel to walk he is saying Mary he is saying John I am going to give you the angel to walk together with you to the promised land I'll give you the cars that I promised you I'll give you the home that I promised you I'll give you the fat back account that I promised you for many of us would say that is good Am I right? It is good enough. But when you read chapter 33 later on, <coughs> Moses says, no. We cannot leave this place unless you go with us. In other words, getting those material blessings, the milk and honey that you promised, the land that you promised, minus you, it is nothing, it is futile. I'm not going to go. I will wait until you go with us. They have been given an angel. If today some of us woke up and suddenly we saw the vision of an angel telling you this is the direction, we would come here and feel very spiritual. But Moses is like, no, 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 no. I cannot go with an angel. It is you, Jehovah, that I need. Hallelujah. It is you that I need. Have we lost fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have we lost fellowship with the maker? For Joseph and Mary, they had lost him for a whole day. Then they went back for him. How long has it been since we fellowshiped with the Lord Jesus Christ? How long has it been? How long has it been since you decided that you're going to just have a me time with God? Not in a crowd, because in a crowd we can lose it. All along they kept on walking with the crowd and they thought Jesus was in their midst. And many times we can be coming to church, we feel nice, we lift our hands up and all the religious celebrations and liturgies that we do, you feel it is well. But the question is, now you ask yourself as an individual, I ask myself as an individual, how is my soul doing? How is my relationship with God? When I decide to pull away and I decide that now it is not me and Pastor Kaunda who is my husband. It is not me and my two children. It is me alone. Like Jacob decided that he's going to let the family cross over the river so that he can remain and check out on his relationship with God. Do we still have fellowship with him? If we have lost, it's not all lost. We can still be able to get him. In the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 2 to 5. Revelations, chapter 2, verse 2 to 5. This is what the Bible says. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my namesake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. This was a message that was written to the church in Ephesus. 
The Lord begins by saying, I know your good deeds because the Lord knows. He knows. He keeps walking in the church. Scripture says he keeps moving in the church. This morning, he is in this church. He is walking in the aisles of this church. He is standing at right at this altar. And he is looking at the church corporately. While at the same time, he is looking at each and every one of us individually. And he is saying, Millicent, I know your ways. I know this that you have been doing correctly. But I have this one thing against you. You have lost your first love. You have lost your first love. And it says, unless you go back to that place where you lost it, I will remove your lampstand. And I know you're wondering, Pastor, why are you people, are you sharing about this? Yet we are supposed to be talking about Christmas. We are supposed to be talking about the chapatis that we will eat. The chapatis are okay, but I'm, I've come today just to remind us that Christmas is not about new clothes. Christmas is not about the food that we are going to eat. Christmas is about worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. But I so feel thanking him that at least you are out of hospital you are not in the hospital you are able to walk on your two feet whether you will be able to afford that nyamachoma or not Christmas will still be okay if you have Jesus in the midst of the Christmas it will still be okay whether it is the skumawiki you have placed there and you've eaten with your ugali Jesus will still be glorified because Christmas is not about food it is about Christ Jesus yes. hallelujah Amen. and so he says I know he is standing here and he's looking around and he's saying I know I know and he is one, he is one that we can never lie to. He knows the deepest secrets in our lives. He knows when we have lost love. And he was writing to the Ephesians church because the church in Ephesus had been commended for being loving. They were loving both God and loving each other. That was a commendation that was written in the book of Ephesians. And so by this time, the Lord is looking at them and realizing they have lost it. The place where they were originally is not the place where they are today. And he's telling them, come back, return back. And this morning, all I can hear is the Lord is saying, come back, return back. I know the challenges that you've gone through, but return back. I know it's not been very easy, but return back to my presence. <laughs> return back to my presence. There are times when we thrive on the past experiences. Oh, the Lord touched me yesterday. In the years of old, oh, I used to pray for two hours. I used to really, really read the word of God. He is saying, forget being that old vessel and become a new vessel, a vessel of today. Where you're going to say, it's not about what I used to do, but it's about what I am doing now. It's about what I am doing now. We are not going to dwell on the touch of yesterday. We are not going to dwell on the blessings of yesterday. They were good and we bless God. But you say, I need more today. It's a song we normally sing. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. We need today. Not of yesterday. We need of today. I'd like us to read Revelations. The book of Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Uh -huh, we can start there. Revelation 3, 11 to 20. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, This thing says the Amen and the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. See, to some pamoja. One, two, let's go. Verse 14. Verse 15, sorry. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. Mm -hmm. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes of that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Verse 20 to Somme Pamoja. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To watch you to happen. That scripture that we've read last, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door. Many times we like using it when we go out for evangelism, isn't it? Behold, I stand at the door. And we are telling this person whom we want to, um, uh, to, be, uh, to become a Christian that you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ is, on the, uh, is outside. He is knocking at the door of your heart, but you're inside. And the knob for opening that door is just on the inside. That's what we say, isn't it? But I came to discover that that scripture was not written to the and believers, it was written to the believers. It was actually written to the church. The church in Laodicea. In other words, this church was meeting every Sunday like we are meeting today in this place. It was meeting every Wednesday the way we meet for the midweek service. But Jesus was locked outside. Jesus was on the outside. And as I read it this time, as I was studying it, I was discovering that maybe they would meet the way we met today in the morning and the worship team was here and they started with prayer and then they led worship and now I'm here preaching and at the end of the preaching there will be whatever follows. You know the program the way it is normally, but Jesus is absent. And he's saying, behold, I stand at the door. He is standing at the door of our hearts this morning. And he is knocking. He wants to get in. He's standing at the door of you who has been serving God. He is standing at the door of you who has been a Christian all this while. He's standing at the door of you who one day repeated the repentance prayer. He is standing at the door of me who is standing here this morning. And he is knocking. Knocking why? Knocking because we have been so engulfed in the business of maybe pleasing one another. In the business of just doing church without the Lord Jesus Christ. We lost him. We lost him. Some of us lost him three months ago. Some of us lost him two weeks ago. We lost him. And we can lose him in very many aspects. We can lose him because of discouragement. We can lose him also because of too much success. Whereas we can also lose him while serving him. And I'm not saying serving him is bad. It is good. Very good. But just like Martha and Mary, Martha had lost it. All she was doing was busy preparing chapatis for the Lord Jesus Christ. He lost fellowship. 
and was complaining about Mary who was seated at the feet of Jesus Christ. All that this season will be able to arise and sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And by the way, do not take me wrong. I'm not saying you don't eat the nyamachoma. It is good. Actually, ukisafiri ukutane nayo unilete. Nisawa. Bona sifiwe. Ukikutana hizo kuku utulete. Utulete tukule. But in the midst of eating, in the midst of that celebration, all that we would learn to just sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. Have fellowship with him. Because when we will have fellowship with him, we will be a source of transformation to our families. We will be gathering in the midst of people who do not know the Lord. We are related uh, by blood with them. But they are not heaven bound. They need Jesus. They are desperate for salvation. It is me sitting at the foot of Jesus Christ, listening to him, drawing from him that will cause me to be a source of encouragement, a source of transformation in this season. And maybe as you're seated there, you're wondering, you're wondering, I lost him. I'm no longer excited the way I used to be excited. Each one of us just think about it that day when you received the Lord Jesus. You needed everyone to know that you're born again. You wanted to read scripture through and through. You wanted to attend that old-fashioned prayer meeting. In that old-fashioned church. That is in case you bought, got born again when we got born again, Geshagi and everything. There were no tiles in that church. But you'd walk in there in a floor that was dusty that would only remove the soil with water, sprinkling water, and you'd kneel down. It never mattered to us. Now we even have tiles, but we have really, really grown separate from the Lord, kneeling on that floor has become difficult for us because we are thinking my new dress. We are thinking what will my neighbor think about me? A neighbor who never saved you when you were headed for destruction. The Lord is saying, remember the height from which you have fallen so that we can go back to that old time religion. Old time religion when we lift our hearts and worship the king of kings though there were no guitars, there were no keyboards. We'd clap our hands electrically. You know? Clapping with all your might and the presence of God would come in our lives. As we rise up on our feet, and pray. I just want you to reflect. Christ is the reason for the season. Christ is the reason for the season. And he's a, he's a God who does not condemn. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation. He does not condemn. His hands are open wide this morning. As the ministry team comes just for a few minutes, the fewest possible, you're saying, Lord, I am born again, but I have not been enjoying my walk with you. You can come and connect with somebody. You are saying, Lord, I am born again. But nowadays, as I read scriptures, I don't understand it. I can read one verse over and over and over. I don't get it. The altar is open. And the Lord wants to give you illumination of his word. He wants to give you fellowship. While the rest of us are lifting their voices in prayer, if you are there, the altar is open. The altar is open. 
he can transform you and you begin having good fellowship with him hallelujah and he's saying just come as you are come just as you are just come as you are you want to go back to that crossroad in the place where nobody used to push you to pray you'd wake up in the middle of the night and pray you'd enjoy reading the word of God You'd enjoy worshipping the King of Kings. You actually wanted to showcase the salvation that was inside of you. Just come as you are. Just come as you are. Do not hesitate. Because the Lord is here. Oh God, we give you praise. Oh God, we give you praise. And maybe you're there. And you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Or you backslid. You went through stuff until you said, there is no need. No, no, no. Today we are saying there is need. He loves you. And his hands are open wide for you. Come just as you are. Don't care about that neighbor. Come just as you are. He is willing to transform you. My brother, he is willing to transform you. Oh God, we love you. Thank you, Jesus.